Hey, my name is Bobby from Wedding Film School, and in this video, I wanna show you how to easily get an audio feed from a DJ or soundboard when filming a wedding. One of the first things I always do when I get to a ceremony location or into a reception area is to go introduce myself to the DJ or audio tech. It usually goes a little something like, hey, my name is Bobby, I'm doing the video today and I'd love to get a feed out of your system if that's all right with you. Then we chat a little bit and eventually get down to business. And there are three main pieces of gear that you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for when you go to figure out the audio feed for your wedding video. There'll be a speaker, a soundboard, and a mic receiver. Not every single one of those exists in every scenario, but those are the three places where you can get a feed from. And while every scenario is different, I typically prefer the mic receiver, followed by the speaker, and finally the soundboard. And it's important to know how everything links up. So at a ceremony or reception, there will be a microphone, which sends its signal to a receiver, which plugs into a soundboard or mixer, and then outputs to a speaker for everyone to hear. And this can be a really confusing topic, especially when starting out. I know I've changed up how I approach this over the years, and I was definitely confused at the beginning. So if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll make sure to respond. Now let's dive into each of these options. And quick note that I have a video dedicated to the cables that I bring to a wedding. So if you haven't seen that, might be good to go check it out quick before moving on. I'm gonna link it up above me here. And those cables are linked in our gear page below, which you can check out, but it is an XLR cable, a quarter inch cable, and an RCA to quarter inch. All right, so first up the mic receiver. This is the little box that the wireless mic transmits to and eventually feeds into the soundboard. There are different models, but most of them have an XLR and a quarter inch out in the back. The advantage to the mic receiver is that it is unaffected by anything the DJ does. When you do a sound check, your levels will remain the same, assuming the person speaking is around the same level and distance. If the DJ changes levels or adds sound effects or music, none of this will show up in your recording, and I like that. But of course, know that if for some reason you do want to record the music playing or something like that, it won't be there. The very best way to get audio out of the receiver is to split the signal, but that's a little bit more advanced, and I'm going to save that for another video. So plugging in is pretty easy. Grab your quarter inch cable, go find the box, which will be either on the DJ table or in some scenarios might be closer to the mic if it's pretty far away. Turn it over and plug one end of your quarter inch cable into the back of the receiver and the other side into your recorder of choice. And I'm using the Tascam DR40 here. Last step is of course to turn the mic on and check your levels and you'll be all set. But sometimes the receiver isn't easily accessible or only has one output on the back and it's already taken. If that's the case, or if you're like me and you like to have backups, my next favorite option is the back of the speaker. Not every speaker will have an output, but oftentimes they will. So in this scenario, you are looking for an XLR that says output or through or something like that. In this video, I am plugging my Tascam DR10X directly into it, but you can also run an XLR cable to your recorder of choice. It's important to know that this source comes after things pass through the soundboard. So it will be recording music and it will be affected by any changes that the DJ makes. So be sure to keep an eye or ear out for those changes and check the levels here and there. And the last option for plugging in, which is my least favorite, is coming out of the soundboard or mixer directly. The advantages to this is that there could be many different options of outputs available. XLR, quarter inch, and RCA are all often available. It's also possible that the DJ could control your levels independently when taken out of the soundboard, and that can be nice. And in some scenarios, those options are worth it, and I might take a feed from the mixer. However, like the speaker, this will capture all audio that comes out. And one of the main reasons I avoid this is that it's often annoying to access and pretty crowded already. And I'd prefer to just have my stuff plugged in somewhere that's a little bit more easy. Combine that with the fact that I'm usually able to get a clean feed elsewhere and I often skip the soundboard. So I know that was quick, but it actually is not that difficult. Thank you guys for watching. If you found any of this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you've got questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll make sure to respond and I'll see you in the next video.